Hello. Now we will make a custom radio button, like other Windows form controls. This control does not have many appearance customization options. Therefore, we will add some appearance properties so that we can change the style color of the existing Windows form radio button. This will be a quick tutorial, as it is very easy to do. Well, let's start with the tutorial. First, we will add a new class for the custom radio button. You can put the name you want. As usual, we import the Windows Forms library to use the conventional controls, and we also import the drawing library. Obviously, to make the custom radio button we must inherit from the radio button control that exists in the Windows Forms library. Now, we will declare fields for the appearance and assign their default values. For example, a color style for the selected state, and another color style for the deselected state. Next, we create the axis or descriptors to these fields. To do this, we select the fields, right click, select quick actions and refactorings, and select encapsulate fields. This is the fastest way to generate properties, if your version of Visual Studio doesn't allow it, you can type the properties manually. Alright, when a value is set to the property, we'll invoke the invalidate method to redraw and refresh the appearance of the control. In the constructor, we simply set the minimum size of the control. This is very important, since the minimum height must be 21 and thus not have problems with the size of the radio button and font. You can initialize other properties, like changing the font type. Now we will override the following methods. As usual, we override the paint event to be able to modify and draw the appearance of the control. First, we will declare all the necessary fields to draw the control. A graphics object from the paint event, we set the smoothing mode. A field of type flow to define the size of the circular border of the radio button. And another field of type flow for the size of the selector circle of the radio button. Now we need a rectangle to set the dimensions of the circular border of the radio button. On the x-axis, to the left side. On the y-axis, centered. To do this we simply subtract the height of the control minus the border size divided by 2. Width and height equal to the value defined in the radio button border size field. We declare another rectangle to set the dimensions of the radio button selector circle. On the x-axis, centered on the previous rectangle. To do this, it will be equal to the x-axis added to the subtraction of the width of the border rectangle and the size of the radio button check divided by 2. On the y-axis, in the same way centered. Width and height equal to the value defined in the radio button check size field. Ok, now we will start with the drawing of the control. Through the using statement, we create a pen object to draw the circular border of the radio button, with the color of the checked color field and size 1.6. Now we create a solid brush object to draw the selector circle of the radio button, with the color of the checked color field. We create another solid brush object to draw the text of the control with the same color as the four color property. First, we will draw the control surface with the same background color. Next, we draw the shape of the radio button in its selected or deselected state. 
If the control is selected, we draw the circular border and the selector circle of the radio button, with the values defined above. It is worth mentioning that the draw ellipse method of the graphics class allows you to draw an ellipse without filling specified by rectangular structure. And the fill ellipse method allows you to draw a filled ellipse specified by rectangular structure. The same goes for the other shapes. Okay, in case the control is deselected, we just draw the circular border of the radio button. To do this, we need to change the pen color to the deselected style color. Finally, we redraw the text of the control using the draw string method. On the X axis, next to the radio button, for this we use the value of the border size and add 8, to establish a margin between the text and the figure. On the Y axis, centered. For this we subtract the height of the control minus the height of the text divided by 2. To finalize our custom radio button, we override the resize event. Here, every time the control is resized, we will set the width of the control manually. Since the location of the radio button shape and the text have changed, and a small part of the text is not visible, then we must set a suitable width. To do this, it is necessary to obtain the width of the text and add a value greater than the size of the circular border of the radio button and margin of the text. Very well, and this is it. You can continue expanding the functionality and appearance of this control, such as adding other properties or methods. Okay. To generate, save the changes and test the control we must build the project. We open the toolbox. We scroll up, and there we will find the custom controls of the project. I'll add more radio buttons and change the color styles of the selected and unselected state. works correctly. Now I'll change the other appearance properties to see if there are any issues. Everything is fine, there is no problem, if there is, simply adjust the parameters, or create new fields or methods to counteract the problem. Well, that would be all in this tutorial, I hope you liked it.